Before we get started, if you like my videos, please subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you can keep up to date with everything we're doing here on the channel. Number 1. La Llorona Originating in Mexico, La Llorona is a terrifying tale of a woman named Maria who decided to drown her children in a river because her husband left her for some younger tale. It's a cruel world out there, folks. Feeling bad about this, she decided to drown herself in a river as well. Unfortunately for Maria, in this story at least, there's definitely an afterlife, and it's not good to child murderers. Therefore, she's cursed to one of the riverbanks for all eternity, weeping as she kidnaps children and drowns them, with the misguided hope of her children someday forgiving her because of this. I'm not sure if there's any logic there, but hey, I guess you've got to do something to pass the time. Often referred to as somewhat of a boogeyman to scare children, it's said that if you hear crying near a body of water, you're fated to be drowned by La Girona next. And that is exactly why I will never go to a water park again. Number 2. Silver Pylon, The Ghost Train of Stockholm This one isn't specifically a story, but more of a creepy recurring character in many Swedish urban legends. So apparently in Stockholm, trains are green. Well, there was one train that was silver instead. Anyways, legend has it if a passenger is picked up by this super shiny train, they will disappear forever, or at least return weeks later with no memory of what happened. It's also generally associated with an abandoned train station called Kimling, and is said to either be totally empty or bustling full of ghosts. Kind of reminds me of the movie Midnight Meat Train for some reason. Anyone see that? Man, what a weird title that was. Number 3. Kuchisaki This is a Japanese legend about a horrifying woman with her cheeks split open, a la Heath Ledger from The Dark Knight, running around various streets in Asia asking if people think she's pretty. Now this one really gets me, mostly because I really don't like giving people bad news. She apparently wears a surgical mask though, at least, so not everyone has to look at that junk all the time. Anyways, if you say she's not pretty, she kills you. So I mean, she's really setting you up for failure. You either become a liar or you're dead, so no one really wins there. Apparently in 2007 though, a coroner found records from the 1970s where a real woman was actually chasing children around doing this and she had the slits in both cheeks, which is super terrifying. I just hope that trend never hits the US. Number 4. El Silbon This folktale originated in the 19th century and is often told in rural parts of Venezuela's Midwest Plains. It essentially begins with a son who kills his father for abusing his beautiful wife. Have you noticed some of these tales have such messed up families? Like, can you imagine coming home after your hard day at work on the plains and your dad is just beating up your wife? Like, what does he even say in that scenario? But so apparently the story goes that after he kills the father, the mother fetches his grandfather and gets him to tie the son to a tree for good old fashioned ass whipping. Then she apparently seasons the wounds with lemon and hot peppers so that he's sufficiently flavored, I guess, and puts a curse on him, which transforms him into a ghost, condemning him to walk the plains, dragging a sack of bones around stalking victims. He's described to look like a disproportionately skinny, extremely tall man who whistles a lot, apparently. His whistling has a weird quality to it, though. If you hear it up close, then you're fine. Like, that means he's far away, but if you hear it from a distance, that means he's actually right there, like right next to you, and you're screwed. So that definitely seems like it would be really helpful for him to stalk victims. I mean, that, that would just confuse the shit out of me. Number five, Gasha de Coro, or the Starving Skeleton. So these are like 90 foot tall giant skeletons, which come together via the bones of people that have died of famine. For example, when a village dies of starvation, all their bones will be knitted together to create a Gasha de Coro. He usually stalks weary travelers walking around at night. And the thing that really sucks for them and just humanity in general is the fact that he's totally invisible until he strikes and that he just generally bites your head off. So I'm assuming you'd probably just be walking around at night and your head comes off. No idea what happened. I mean, it's like you can only be so careful in this world. You'll never expect that to happen. <laughs> The origin of Gasha de Kuro is shrouded in mystery, but one possible explanation comes from 10th century CE during a very bloody conflict with Japan's government, which are quite common in the island nation's history. The daughter of a warlord sought to protect her father and castle from an invading army summoned a giant skeleton. She used a spell inscribed on a scroll and the skeleton appeared from a dark void to attack the soldiers. 
I've included a famous photo of a painting depicting this event. Apparently after the mythical battle, Kashitakuro was unleashed onto the world, because, I mean, I'm assuming, you know, once all the people were dead that she wanted dead, what is she going to do? How is she going to stop these 90 foot skeletons? Just not going to happen. So anyways, that's all five of them. Go ahead and let me know in the comments if there's any cool international urban legends that I can talk about in a future video. Otherwise, see you in the next one, and stay spooky, my friends. Oh, and uh, watch out for giant skeletons.